Hello everyone. I am Dr. Drupti. In this video, we are going to learn about sources and uses of NADPH. NADH and NADPH, these are two different molecules. So do not get confused between NADH and NADPH. NADH is reduced form of NAD plus and NADPH is reduced form of NADP plus. NAD plus stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and in the NADP nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate is present. So the extra group is phosphate group which is present in both NADP and its reduced form NADPH. This NAD plus and NADP plus these are derived from vitamin that is niacin. Both this NADH and NADPH, they have different functions in the body. NADH is generated in various catabolic pathways like in glycolysis, TCA cycle, beta oxidation of fatty acids. And this NADH, it is formed and it is finally oxidized through respiratory chain that is electron transport chain and to generate ATP. So these the reducing equivalents, they enter respiratory chain and finally we get ATP with the help of this NADH. So this NADH has vital role in cellular respiration and catabolic reaction. Now how this NADPH plays different role? NADPH is a readily available reducing power and it is very important in various biosynthetic processes. It acts as reductant there and this NADPH has role in various anabolic reactions. What are the sources of NADPH? So this NADPH is mainly derived from three important sources and the first one is most important that is it is derived from HMP pathway that is hexose monophosphate pathway which is also called as pentose phosphate pathway. This NADPH it is formed in two reactions. The first reaction is conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconolactone by the action of enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So this is the reaction in HMP pathway where there is production of NADPH. The second reaction is conversion of 6-phosphogluconate to ribulose 5-phosphate by the action of enzyme phosphogluconate dehydrogenase. So these two reactions are very important for generation of NADPH and the important significance or important function of HMP pathway is to produce NADPH along with the ribose 5-phosphate. The next source is conversion of malate to pyruvate by the action of enzyme which is called as malic enzyme and uh, when it is important, it is important during transport of acetyl-CoA from mitochondria to cytosol. We know that acetyl-CoA cannot cross mitochondrial membrane. So the citrate which is formed by condensation of acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate, it, is, it comes into cytosol and again it is lyased to form oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA. Now that oxaloacetate is again converted to malate and then malate is converted to pyruvate by the action of enzyme which is known as malic enzyme. And during this process, there is formation of NADPH. So this is the second source of NADPH. The third source is through a minor pathway, which is conversion of isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate. And it is by the action of enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase, but it is a cytosolic enzyme. It is different from the mitochondrial enzyme, which is involved in Krebs cycle. So these are three important sources of NADPH but the most important source is HMP pathway. NADPH plays very important role in various reactions in the body. And the first important function is it has important role in reductive lipid biosynthesis. It is involved in the synthesis of fatty acid, cholesterol, steroids, neurotransmitters and various steroid hormones. It is important in free radical scavenging, it is important to maintain RBC membrane fragility. It is useful for prevention of myth hemoglobin formation. It is also helpful for detoxification of drugs. And it is it has a role in bactericidal activity of macrophages. 
let's first talk about the first important function of NADPH that is its role as a reductant in lipid biosynthesis. So as I have said, it is useful for fatty acid synthesis and in the reaction where which is catalyzed by keto acid acyl reductase where beta ketoacyl enzyme is converted into beta hydroxyl acyl enzyme. This reaction requires NADPH. The second reaction of fatty acid biosynthesis which requires NADPH is conversion of alpha beta unsaturated acyl enzyme to acyl enzyme by the action of enzyme in oil reductase. So this is the second reaction of fatty acid synthesis where NADPH is required. Then in the cholesterol biosynthesis also the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate which is catalyzed by HMG-CoA reductase. This reaction also requires NADPH as reductant. In the bile acid synthesis, the conversion of cholesterol to 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol by the action of enzyme 7-alpha hydroxylase also requires NADPH. Synthesis of calcitriol, which is active form of vitamin D, that is formation of 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol from 25-dihydroxycholecalciferol uh, by the action of enzyme 1-alpha hydroxylase. This step also requires NADPH. In addition to this, steroid biosynthesis in organs like adrenal cortex, gonads and biosynthesis of neurotransmitters. All these reactions all require NADPH. NADPH is also required in other synthetic reactions like in phenylalanine metabolism. Phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine by the action of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. In this reaction, tetrahydrobiopterin is converted to dihydrobiopterin and to again form tetrahydrobiopterin from dihydrobiopterin, NADPH is required. It is also important in folate metabolism. NADPH is required in the conversion of folate to dihydrofolate and conversion of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate and the reactions are catalyzed by folate reductase. NADPH is also required in nitric oxide synthesis. It is formed from arginine. Arginine is converted to citrulline by the action of enzyme nitric oxide synthase. In this reaction, oxygen is utilized to form nitric oxide and this reaction requires NADPH. Second important function of NADPH is free radical scavenging. These free radicals are oxygen containing molecules having one or more unpaired electrons and they are highly reactive. They are reactive oxygen species. And these free radicals like superoxide, uh, iron, hydrogen peroxide, they are continuously produced in the cell as metabolic byproducts. And these oxidant, they damage DNA, proteins, fatty acids and other molecules leading to cell damage. And these radicals are made harmless by reduction using this NADPH and they are converted into harmless species like water and oxygen. So here this superoxide anion which is reactive oxygen species which is converted into hydrogen peroxide by the action of enzyme superoxide dismutase. In this reaction NADPH is utilized and oxygen is formed. Later on this hydrogen peroxide it is converted to harmless water. In this process also NADPH is utilized and the enzymes which catalyze this reaction are peroxidase and catalysis. So thus NADPH is utilized in the free radical scavenging. The third important function of NADPH is to protect the RBC membrane fragility means it maintains the RBC membrane integrity. We know that RBC carries oxygen and it is exposed to high oxygen tension. It is prone to oxidant damage much more than other cells and the oxidant species cause peroxidation of membrane phospholipids leading to damage and the resulting RBC membrane becomes very fragile and RBCs easily get hemolyzed and this is protected with the help of NADPH and reduced glutathione. Now let's see how it occurs. The hydrogen peroxide which is formed in the RBC, it is converted into harmless molecule that is water. In this process, reduced glutathione is utilized. 
by the action of enzyme glutathione peroxidase it is a selenium containing enzyme and this reduced glutathione is now becomes oxidized one so again this oxidized glutathione is converted to reduced glutathione by the action of enzyme glutathione reductase and this requires nadph so in this process with the help of nadph and reduced glutathione the hydrogen peroxide which is formed in the rbc are converted into water molecule and thus the fragility is protected and uh, the rbc membrane is prevented from hemolysis and this nadph is derived from hmp pathway so it is the important source of nadph is hmp pathway in rbc prevention of myth hemoglobin formation is also important function of nadph this myth hemoglobin it is formed when ion of heme moiety of hemoglobin is oxidized so this myth hemoglobin ion is present in the oxidized form in the ferric form so this myth hemoglobin is converted back to hemoglobin so that it can carry oxygen myth hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen so it is converted to hemoglobin by this cytochrome b5 system here cytochrome b5 which has ferrous ion in the ferrous state it is converted into cytochrome b5 in the ferric state and again to convert it back it requires nadph 30% action is through nadph and 70% action is through nadh so both nadph and nadh are involved in this process so this myth hemoglobin formation is prevented by keeping heme ion in the reduced state that is ferrous state by using nadph as a source of reducing equivalent to cytochrome b5 and this is how myth hemoglobin formation is prevented using this nadph detoxification of drugs is also very important function of nadph hydroxylation reaction which is which is catalyzed by cytochrome p450 dependent mono oxygenase it is the usually first reaction that most drugs undergo for their detoxification and this process this is the first reaction so this process utilizes this nadph and this uh, this nadph is a source of reducing equivalent here and then the hydroxylated drugs which are formed Uh, by this first reaction they are further metabolized and then excreted so nadph has important role in detoxification of drugs nadh is important in the bactericidal activity of macrophages this macrophages and other cytotoxic cells such as neutrophils they use oxidant species as agents to kill pathogenic microbes and to generate these free radical species they use nadph let's see how so oxygen here is converted into superoxide anion by the action of enzyme nadph oxidase in this reaction nadph is utilized and this is called as respiratory burst so this nadph is responsible for respiratory burst which means that increase oxygen molecules are utilized during this reactions so there is more requirement of oxygen during this process of respiratory burst to form superoxide anions later on the superoxide anions they are converted into hydrogen peroxides by the action of enzyme superoxide dismutase this reaction also requires nadph both superoxide anion and hydrogen peroxide they are reactive oxygen species which are useful to kill bacteria and this hydrogen peroxide by the action of enzyme myeloperoxidase they are again converted into hypochlorous acid which is also a reactive oxygen species which, which helps in killing the bacteria so in the macrophages the bactericidal activity of macrophage it utilizes this nadph and there is production of various reactive oxygen species like superoxide anions hydrogen peroxide and hypochlorous acid to kill the bacteria and if there is genetic deficiency of this nadph oxidase then it leads to chronic granulomatosis so in this case the phagocytosis cannot occur properly as there is no generation of reactive oxygen species to to kill the bacteria and that's why the patient is prone to persistent and multiple infections of skin lungs bones liver and lymphocytes let's summarize today's topic 
NADPH is reduced form of NADP+. The various sources of NADPH are first HMP pathway, second is conversion of malate to pyruvate by malic enzyme and third is by cytosolic isocitrate dehydrogenase. The various uses of NADPH are in the reductive lipid biosynthesis, in free radical scavenging, to protect RBC membrane fragility, prevention of myth hemoglobin formation, detoxification of drugs and bactericidal activity of macrophages. So I hope this video will be useful to you. Thank you for watching.